Hi, my name is Sophie Feigl and I'm a PhD student in philosophy of science based at the University of Vienna. I recently published an article in Bioessays called Seeing Lamarckian More Positively. The use this use paradigm can increase understanding. In my article, I comment on another commentary which was published in the February edition of Bioessays, authored by Dave Speyer. Speyer argues that we should stop a sloppy use of the term Lamarckian. While I agreed with the author that we should stop a sloppy use, I disagreed with his conclusion, namely that we should stop the use of the term Lamarckian altogether. It was thus my aim to come up with an argument that shows that there is some merit in using the term Lamarckian. My argument proceeded in three steps. The first step was to define what Lamarckian actually means in order to avoid a sloppy use. I suggested to go back to the literature, that is, see what Lamarck had to say about this. Lamarck proposed that the inheritance of acquired traits is governed by a use-disuse principle, Thus, I suggest we should use the use this use principle in order to discern whether an instance of the inheritance of acquired traits qualifies as Lamarckian or not. If the use of an entity leads to its augmentation or increase in numbers over generations, and if the disuse of an entity leads to its reduction or reduction in numbers over generations, then we have a genuine case of a Lamarckian form of inheritance of acquired traits. The second step of my argument was to look for actual instantiations of the use disuse principle. I came up with two examples, one being interference-driven space acquisition in CRISPR systems, the other being the inheritance of small RNAs throughout generations. Both examples rest on a common theme. In both examples, Certain entities compete for binding to scarce and limited resources. Binding of an entity to such a resource means use and leads to the amplification and persistence of this specific entity throughout generations. Failing to bind means disuse and leads to the reduction of the specific entity throughout generations. Thus, I concluded that there are at least two genuine examples of a Lamarckian instance of the inheritance of acquired traits. The third step was to ask, so what? What is the actual benefit of calling these instances Lamarckian? I suggested that we do not need to have a very strong realist position concerning that, meaning we do not have to claim that the use this use principle really cuts nature at its joints. Rather, I suggest them a moderate approach. Namely, I argue that we should claim the use this use principle is true enough, meaning it is the best explanation of certain instances of the inheritance of acquired traits. This claim rests on my assumption that all scientific explanations are highly idealized. This means that all scientific explanations capture certain aspects of the underlying phenomena they want to explain very well, which comes at the expense of idealizing or even distorting other aspects of the underlying phenomena. This leads to the fact that there could even be two highly idealized but contradictory explanations which both and at the same time increase our understanding of one phenomenon. This is the same what happens for the use disuse principle. While the use disuse principle describes certain aspects of the underlying phenomenon we want to explain very well, it might mask or leave out or distort other aspects of the underlying phenomenon. Nevertheless, it increases our understanding, helps us predict outcomes and specify interactions. This is exactly what can go right when we use the term Lamarckian. Now, I hope I have convinced you that there is some merit in using the term Lamarckian. And if you want more information, please see my commentary, specifically because of the examples I used there. And if you want to discuss my proposal, please feel free to contact me.